talking about turtles. The reservation is beautiful. I mean it. Take a look. There are pine trees everywhere. Thousands of ponderosa pine trees. Millions. I guess maybe you can take a pine trees, take pine trees for granted, but they're just pine trees, but they're tall and thin and green and brown and big. Some of the pines are nearly 90 feet tall and more than 300 years old, older than the United States. Some of them were alive when Abraham Lincoln was president. Some of them were alive when George Washington was president. Some of them were alive when Benjamin Franklin was born. I'm talking old. I've probably climbed like 100 different trees in my lifetime. There are 12 in my backyard, another 50 or 60 in the small stand of woods across the field, and another 20 or 30 around our little town, and a few way out in the deep woods. And that tall monster that sits behind side the, the highway to West End past Turtle Lake. That one is way over 100 feet tall. It might be 150 feet tall. You could build a house just using the wood from that tree. When we were little, like 10 years old, Rowdy and I climbed that sucker. It was probably stupid. Yeah, okay, it was stupid. It's not like we were lumberjacks or anything. It's not like we used anything except our hands and feet and dumb luck. But we weren't afraid of falling that day. Other days, yeah, I'm terrified of falling. No matter how old I get, I think I'm always going to be scared of falling. But I wasn't scared of gravity on that day. Heck, gravity didn't even exist. It was July, crazy hot and dry. It hadn't rained in like 60 days. Drought hot, scorpion hot. Vultures flying in circles in the sky, hot. Mostly, Rowdy and I just sat in my basement room, which was maybe five degrees cooler than the rest of the house. We read books and watched TV and played video games. Mostly, Rowdy and I just sat and still and dreamed about air conditioning. When I get rich and famous, Rowdy said, I'm going to have a house that has an air conditioner in every room. Sears has those big air conditioners that can cool a whole house, I said. Just one machine, Rowdy asked. Yeah, you, you put it outside and you connect it through air vents and stuff. Wow, how much does that cost? Oh, like a few thousand bucks, I think. You'll all never have that much money. You will when you play in the NBA. Yeah, but I'll probably have to play pro basketball in like Sweden or Norway or Russia or something. And I won't need air conditioning. I'll probably live in like like an igloo or a reindeer or something. or And own a reindeer or something. You're going to play for Seattle, man. Yeah, right. Rowdy didn't believe in himself, not much, so I tried to pump him up. You're the toughest kid on the res, I said. I know. You're the fastest and the strongest, and the most handsome, too. If I had a dog with a face like yours, I'd shave its ass and teach it to walk backwards. I once had a zit that looked like you, and I popped it, and then, I, then it looked even more like you. This one time, I ate like three hot dogs and a bowl of clam chowder and then got diarrhea all over the floor, and it looked like you. And then you ate it, Rowdy said. We laughed ourselves silly. We laughed ourselves sweaty. Don't make me laugh, I said. It's too hot to laugh. It's too hot to sit in this house. Let's go swimming. Where? Turtle Lake. Okay, I said. But I was scared of Turtle Lake. It was a small body of water, maybe only a mile around, but maybe less. But it was deep, crazy deep. Nobody had ever been to the bottom. I'm not a very good swimmer, so I was always afraid I'd sink and drown and they'd never find my body. <clears throat> One year, these scientists came with a mini submarine and tried to find the bottom, but the lake was so silty and muddy that they couldn't see. And the nearby uranium mine made their radar sonar machines go nuts, so they couldn't see that way either. So they never made it to the bottom. The lake is round, perfectly round, so the scientists said it was probably an ancient and dormant volcano crater. Yeah, a volcano on the res. The lake was so deep because the volcano crater and tunnels and lava chutes and all the plumbing all went way down to the center of the earth. That lake was like forever deep. There were all sorts of myths and legends surrounding the lake. I mean, we're Indians and we like to make up shit about lakes, you know. Some people said the lake is named Turtle because it's round and green like a turtle shell. Some people said it's named Turtle because it used to be filled with regular turtles. Some people said it's named Turtle because it used to be home to this giant snapping turtle that ate Indians. A Jurassic Turtle. Steven Spielberg Turtle. 
a King Kong versus a giant reservation turtle turtle. I didn't exactly believe in the giant turtle myth. I was too old and smart for that. But I am still an Indian, and we like to be scared. I don't know what it's all about us, but we love ghosts. We love monsters. But I was really scared of this other story about Turtle Lake. My dad told me the story. When he was a kid, he watched a horse drown in Turtle Lake and disappear. Some of the others say it was a giant turtle that grabbed the horse, Dad said, but they were lying. They were just being silly. That horse was just stupid. It was so stupid, we named it Stupid Horse. <clears throat> well, Stupid Horse sank into the endless depths of Turtle Lake, and everybody figured that was the end of that story. But a few weeks later, Stupid Horse's body washed up on the shores of Benjamin Lake, 10 miles away from Turtle Lake. Everybody just figured some joker found the body and moved it, Dad said, to scare people. <clears throat> people laughed at the practical joke. Then a bunch of guys threw the dead horse back into the back of the truck, drove it to the dump, and buried it, burned it. Simple story, right? No, it doesn't end there. Well, a few weeks later, after they burned the body, a bunch of kids were swimming in Turtle Lake when it caught fire. Yes, the whole lake caught on fire. The kids were swimming close to the dock because the lake was so deep. Most kids swam close to shore. And the fire started out in the middle of the lake, so the kids were able to get able to safely climb out of the water before it went up like a big bowl of gasoline. It burned for a few hours, Dad said. Burned hot and fast, and then it went out, just like that. People stayed away for a few days, then went to take a look at the damage, you know. And guess what they found? Stupid horse washed up on shore again. Despite being burned at the dump and burned again off the lake of fire, stupid horse was untouched. Well, the horse was still dead, of course but it was unburned. Nobody went near that horse after that. They just let it rot, but it took a long time, too long. For weeks, the dead body just lay there. Didn't go bad or anything, didn't, didn't stink. Bugs and animals stayed away. Only after a few weeks did stupid horse finally let go. His skin and flesh melted away. The maggots and coyotes ate their fill, and the horse was just bones. Let me tell you, Dad said, that was just about the scariest thing I had ever seen. That horse skeleton lying there. It was freaky. After a few more weeks, the skeleton collapsed into a pile of bones, and the water and the wind dragged them away. It was a freaky story. Nobody swam in Turtle Lake for 10, 11 years, Dad said. Me, I don't think anybody should be swimming in there now. But people forget. They forget good things, and they forget about bad things. They forget that lakes can catch on fire. They forget that dead horses can magically vanish and disappear, reappear. I mean, geez, we're Indians. We Indians are just weird. So anyway, on that hot summer day, Rowdy and I walked the five miles from my house to Turtle Lake. All the way, I thought about fire and horses, but I wasn't going to tell Rowdy, Rowdy about that. He would just call me a wuss or a pussy and just would have said it was kid stuff. He would have just said it was a hot day that needed a cold lake. As we walked, I saw that monster pine tree ahead of us. It was so tall and green and beautiful. It was the only reservation skyscraper, you know. I love that tree, I said. It's because you're a tree fag, Rowdy said. I'm not a tree fag, I said. And how come you like to stick your dick inside knot holes? I stick my dick in the girl trees, I said. Rowdy laughed his ha-ha-he-he -he avalanche laughed. I loved to make him laugh. I was the only one who knew how to make him laugh. Hey, he said, you know what we should do? I hate when Rowdy asked that particular question. It meant we were about to do something dangerous. What should we do, I asked. We should climb that monster. That tree? No, we should climb your big-ass tree. Of course, I'm talking about that tree, the biggest tree on the res. It wasn't really open to debate. I had to climb the tree. Rowdy knew I had to climb the tree with him. I couldn't back down. That wasn't how our friendship worked. We're gonna die, I said. Probably, Rowdy said. So we walked over to the tree and looked up. It was way tall. I got dizzy. You first, Rowdy said. Spit on my hands, rubbed them together, and reached up for the first branch. I pulled myself up to the next branch, and then the next one, and then the next. And Rowdy followed me. Branch by branch, Rowdy and I climbed toward the top of the tree to the bottom of the sky. 
Near the top, the branches got thinner and thinner. I wondered if they'd support our weight. I kept expecting one of them to snap and send me plummeting to my death, but it didn't happen. The branches would not break. Rowdy and I climbed and climbed and climbed. We made it to the top. Well, almost to the top. Even Rowdy was too scared to step on the finished branches. So we made it within 10 feet of the top. Not at the summit, but close enough to call it the summit. We clung tightly to the tree as it swung in the breeze. I was scared, sure, terrified, but it was also fun, you know? We were more than 100 feet in the air. From our vantage point, we could see for miles. We could see from one end of the reservation to the other. We could see our entire world. And our entire world at that moment was green and golden and perfect. Wow, I said. It's pretty, Rowdy said. I've never seen anything so pretty. It's the only time I'd ever heard him talk like that. We stayed in the top of the tree for an hour or two. We didn't want to leave. I thought maybe we'd stay up there and die. I thought maybe 200 years later, scientists would find two boy skeletons stuck in the top of that tree. But Rowdy broke the spell. He farted. One greasy one. A greasy, smelly one that sounded like it was half solid. Jeez, I said, I think you just killed the tree. We laughed. And then we climbed down. I don't know if anyone else has ever climbed that tree. I look at it now, years later, and I can't believe we did it. And I can't believe I survived my first year at Reardon. After the last day of school ended, I didn't do much. It was summer. I wasn't supposed to do anything. I mostly sat in my room and read comics. I missed my white friends and white teachers and my translucent semi-girlfriend. Ah, Penelope. I hoped she was thinking about me. I'd already written her three love letters. I'd hope she'd write me back. Gordy wanted, me, wanted to come to the res and stay with a week for a week or two. How crazy was that? Roger heading, when Roger heading to Eastern Washington University on a football scholarship had willed his basketball uniform to me. You're gonna be a star, he said. I felt hopeful and silly about the future. And then yesterday I was sitting in the living room watching some nature show about honeybees when there's a knock on the door. Come in, I shouted. And Rowdy walked inside. Wow, I said. Yeah, he said. We'd always been such scintillating conversationalists. What are you doing here, I said. I'm bored. Last time I saw you, you tried to punch me. I missed. I thought you were going to break my nose. I wanted to break your nose. You know, I said, it's probably not the best thing in the world to do, punching a hydro in the skull. Ah, shoot, he said. I couldn't give you any more brain damage than you already got. Besides, I didn't give you one, I, didn't I give you one concussion already? Yep, three stitches in my forehead. Hey man, I had nothing to do with those stitches. I only do concussions. I laughed. He laughed. I thought you hated me, I said. I do, but I'm bored. So what? So you want to maybe shoot some hoops? For a second, I thought about saying no. thought about telling him to bite my ass. thought about making him apologize, but I couldn't. He was never going to change. Let's go, I said. We walked over to the courts behind the high school. Two old hoops with chain nets. We just shot lazy jumpers for a few minutes. We didn't talk. Didn't need to talk. We were basketball twins. Of course, Rowdy got hot, hit 15 or 20 in a row. I rebounded and kept passing the ball to him. Then I got hot, hit 21 in a row, and Rowdy rebounded for me. Want to go one-on-one, -on -one, Rowdy asked? Yeah. You've never beaten me one-on-one, -on -one, he said, you pussy. Yeah, that's going to change. Not today, he said. Maybe not today, I said, but someday. Your ball, he said, and passed it to me. Spun the rock in my hand. Where are you going to school next year, I asked. Where do you think, dumbass? Right here, where I've always been. You could come to Reardon with me. You already asked me that once. Yeah, but I asked you a long time ago, before everything happened. Before we knew stuff. So I'm asking you again. Come to Reardon with me. Now he breathed deeply for a second. Thought he was going to cry. Really, I expected him to cry, but he didn't. You know, I was reading this book, he said. Wow, you reading a book? I said, mock surprised. Eat me. We laughed. So anyway, he said, I was reading this book about old time Indians, about how we used to be nomadic. Yeah, I said. So I looked up monad nomadic in the dictionary. It means people who move around, who keep moving in search of food and water and grazing lands. That sounds about right. Well, the thing is, I don't think Indians are nomadic anymore. Most Indians, anyway. 
No, we're not, I said. I'm not nomadic, Rowdy said. Hardly anybody on this res is nomadic, except for you. You're the only nomadic one. Whatever. No, I'm serious. I always knew you were going to leave. I always knew you were going to leave us behind and travel the world. <clears throat> I had this dream about you a few months ago. You were standing on the Great Wall of China. <clears throat> you looked happy. And... You looked happy. And was, I was happy for you. Rowdy didn't cry, but I did. You're an old-time nomad, Rowdy said. You're going to keep moving all over the world in search of food and water and grazing land. That's pretty cool. I could barely talk. Thank you, I said. Yeah, Rowdy said. Just make sure you send me postcards, you asshole. From everywhere, I said. I would always love Rowdy, and I would always miss him, too just as I would always love and miss my grandmother, my big sister, and Eugene, just as I would always love and miss my reservation and my tribe. I hoped and prayed they would someday forgive me for leaving them. I hoped and prayed that I would someday forgive myself for leaving them. Ah, oh, man, Rowdy said, stop crying. Will we still know each other when we're old men, I asked. Who knows anything? Then he threw the ball, threw me the ball. Now quit your blubbering and play ball. I wiped my tears away, dribbled once, twice, and pulled up for a jumper. Rowdy and I still played one-on-one -on -one for hours. We played until dark. We played until the streetlights lit up the court. We played until the bats swooped down at our heads. We played until the moon was huge and golden on a perfect dark sky. We didn't keep score. 